It's time for day number two here at DreamHack Summer 2015. We had 128 players gather here to play Hearthstone and fight for $40,000 in prizes as well as 200 plus world championship points. And to find out what's going to happen today, we're going to see rounds four through seven of the Swiss portion before we go to the single elimination bracket on day number three. My name is Dan Cho. I'm also known as Frodan. I'm joined on desk once again by Mars Nims Filipovich from Team Captains Cloud9. And uh, we also have Jakob Lothar Szyguski from Team Nylum. How did I do? Hello. On the last name? Did I, did I get it right? Almost. 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 Oh, you'll get it. Eventually. Okay, really I'll, I'll nail it on the third day. Third time's a charm. Today is still a little bit rocky, but uh, we've learned a lot of lessons on day number one, not just in terms of how Swiss functions in Hearthstone, but also about some of these players here. We have uh, currently a couple people here who are 3-0, a lot of people who are 2-1, and then the majority of people here are actually eliminated already. There's nope. a lot of different stuff happening. Uh, for, f for starters, I was thinking Swiss is more about playing all the matches, mm -hmm. but as we see, uh, as we seen yesterday, it's more about not losing to games. So all the players that right. lost to games, they're dropping from the tournament now, uh, which might be a very interesting, uh, v very interesting situation because if some people actually get to top eight, mm -hmm. but they can't play in it, right? Because they have to travel somewhere on Monday. Those guys who we'll dropped. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, uh, Lothar, you're looking at the list on the screen here. Who are some of the people that stand out to you that are currently 3 0? Tiddle Sorrisul. That's, that's one of the guys that I was looking forward to, be well, uh, to do well in this right. tournament. And uh, for now, he's 3 0. Mm -hmm. So he's on a good way to you know, rock, the, uh, rock the, the results here. Yeah. And uh, Kaldi here also, his uh, tournament result lately was kind of lacking. But he's still a really, uh, really great player, so I was looking forward right. to him too. And uh, surprisingly, Fraser is doing really well too. Yeah, you know, Fraser actually had some really bad results recently yeah. where he was losing almost all of his pro matches that are on screen. Um, and even some of the other members that you saw there too, Purple, for example, from Team Archon, he wasn't exactly living up to a lot of the hype and ladder results that people know him for, but he's here 3-0 at the same time. Yeah. Now, uh, we are going to be playing through seven rounds today. We'll find out who our eight competitors are. And in order to advance, you have to go either 7-0 or 6-1. This is because yeah. the way Swiss works is that you're paired with a person with equal ranking or equal matches uh, in terms of your score. And from that point on, you have to have a certain record because at the end of it, we'll have eight players with that seven who are six and one and one who's seven zero out of 128 players we actually have a lot of mm -hmm. pro players who are in the top like there's, there's only a couple of names that i don't recognize at the moment yeah but a couple of names that we might recognize after this tournament and uh, as you said Kaldi and fraser who were uh, are doing really good those are the champions of the open bracket for the last DreamHack summer last right. year exactly yeah, that's very true. that's how they made their names and also we have a couple of other swedish players that are rising up too to the occasion oskaka and freaky are still doing pretty well i uh, also want to draw attention to hoy who won by a game house cup two people thought maybe that was a fluke but he's here still three zero but three zero is still really far yeah exactly what i want to say it's it's three still oh a pretty big seems difference. like a okay result for right. now but it's it's not even like half right. of the tournament this so is where the men are made <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to be example, because four rounds of Swiss is brutal, especially considering the, the lineup here. A couple people who are still in the tournament, but they do have one loss. Dog from Team Complexity, who we saw had a crazy series. Stan Sifka, who I think we're going to try to see if we can get on stream uh, in between matches of heats. Raynad mm -hmm. from Tempo Storm, he's also at one, uh, one loss. So is Amaz, but they're still in the tournament as long yep. as they don't lose from this point on. We'll, we'll see the results after this round, because then we'll have a mix between the players that were 3-0, or be, we'll be like, yeah. uh, together with the guys that are now 2-1, you know? For so sure. There will be some mix, mix it up situations in the next round, and it will get more exciting mm -hmm. in round five, in round six, and then we come to the situation when people will be actually fighting for their lives for sure. with 5-1 results. Guys, look at those names. This is the tournament with the highest congestion of the pro players. We never had so many pro names on one list. Well, well I mean, as Hearthstone... Last, last year, DreamHack Summer was stacked, too. Yeah. Or not e even DreamHack Winter names. last year yeah, that's was true. insane. I mean, Kalento and Shreko were also there, too. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to make it for uh, travel reasons. Uh, but if you take a look at some of those lists, there's a, a few other names that stick out to me. I'm looking at Kungin from Nylum. He's still in the tournament here, despite having no sleep. He stayed up 40 hours, because yeah. DreamHack's that type of event where you want to have fun. Um, of, of, of course, the French players are also are still in it. Loilo, you need Yag. Uh, they're doing and the well. Is uh, the is 3-0 or 2-1? 2-1. Two one, two two one. One. Yeah. Uh, you need this 3-0, right? Yes. Yes, you need yes. this 3-0. So we do have a good mix of players from all different ports in the regions. Also, shout out to Tiddler's teammate, Frozen Ice, who also joined Celestial. Uh, he's a player who's a lot of people considered one of the best Taiwanese players, along with Roger and Tom. 
Uh, those two guys have done well. There are some players who have been eliminated, unfortunately, that you've been uh, used to seeing. We saw uh, Firebat, for example, eliminated. Zelay, even though he won his well, first match, know, is eliminated. Eliminated might be a little bit too harsh because Sorry, they can, can still correct. play, right? Yeah, they, they, they've been ineligible to make top eight, but they can still finish top yeah. 16, which is great because Gosu Gamer ranking points is on the line here, yeah, Lothar. And, and as, as Nimsh also said, if someone drops from the, 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 the top eight for whatever reason, like travel or just not feeling well or whatever, right. Then someone with a result of 5 2 well will actually. advance. And that's that's one of the biggest reasons why you should play. Oh, that's still. a really good reason. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, some people who you know are zero three at this point might want to consider, yeah. you know, calling zero it quits. Three <laughs> zero three, yeah. or zero four, or you know what? Don't be that. If you're zero six, just don't show for the last match because you don't want to go zero seven. <laughs> you don't want to be that because one guy, <laughs> uh, hypothetically speaking, if the Swiss tournament played out and you were mandatory to show up, one person does go zero seven. But there's no. Don't be that guy. Are you sure? Being a zero zero seven is actually not that bad. Ah, yeah. I guess if you're, <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're applying for MI6, but not Anywhere, not necessarily so in Hearthstone tournaments. Not this yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, well, we're getting ready for our first match, by the way, guys. It will be Tiller Celestial versus Rosen. Uh, Rosen did manage to take off some pretty good wins here to start things off. Uh, yep. And I believe we're about to get underway. Uh, do you guys know anything about Rosen? He is a Swedish player local here. Well, he is an admin of Forsen's chat. He's an a he's a mod in Force and Chat. Yeah, he's a Force and boy. So he doesn't do yeah. anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like a yeah. He's, he's uh, essentially uh, unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> if that's it, the it, case. it's just the icon, you know. <laughs> All right, right, right. It's just a lightning bolt for sure. I don't know much about Rosen, but it's great that he's here playing versus uh, Tiddler Celestial. Uh, Tiddler, very known player, um, the finalist of, of the World Championships, and the finalist of WCA as well. And. Uh, the uh, owner, right, of Team Celestial. That's well, right. He started it. I'm not exactly sure too much about Celestial, but I have to imagine that he is the driving force, considering his name yeah. is part of the team. He's on the banner. Yeah. So, right. well, this will be a fast match because there's two flame imps against a face hunter. Oh man, I just love the fact that Hitler is playing Zoo again. Uh, even though at this he was uh, playing Handlock. At WCA, he was playing that Zoo, and uh, Zoo was his deck that he used to qualify for BlizzCon as well. Like well, this it has Void Colors, so it's not like pure Zoo, because pure Zoo doesn't really rely on demons, like uh, the usual um, demon lock, right? So this is kind of like a hybrid between those two. Yeah, but still, it's like more of an aggressive yeah, warlock of course, that, of course. that he's known for. To be honest, I really dislike uh, playing two Flame Imps in current meta game, where Hunter is so brilliant. And flames are just... Really, a all-in card when it comes to you know your life totals against a hunter. <laughs> Two flamers are like three turns of hero power for the hunter. Yeah, it's really tough. Even if you draw them uh, in the early game, it's still so much damage. And late game, you just can't play them. They're a blank card. Here we can yep. see Unleash the Hound. Being a very important pickup for Rosen. Well, and he only lacks a knife juggler here to have a. Perfect uh, like um, combat mechanism to battle the zoo because there will be a lot of minions on uh, on the social side. As we can see, ah, he misses the knife juggler here. Yeah, that's brutal. You really want to be able to try and get as much efficiency as possible early yeah, on. Yeah, it's not only that, you know, because uh, now he had to trade the hunted creeper, and that leaves him really vulnerable to the unleash the house. You know? otherwise <laughs> he would have been with one less creature and one. Yeah. Bigger creature that is not so you know uh, easy killed by the good by the doggies, right? Yeah, that's right. So here I think like unleash the hounds with abuse the surgeon. You have to clear. It's uh, you yeah, can't really raise that. It's really a great solution here. And an explosive trap will be much better. Yeah, and of course. It's <laughs> explosive trap and unleash the hounds. There's two mechanisms to stop the zoo. Yeah. Lothar, from your perspective, who has the who has an edge in this matchup? Like a hunter most of the time. It's like a. Especially when the um, Warlock player plays with two Flame Amps and he doesn't draw a Defender Argus because that's one of the cards that actually can turn the game around is a Defender Argus, a timely played Defender Argus. Some situations when there's like an explosive trap being played to slow down the pace of the game and you know like clear all of the demons or whatever the Warlock player plays, then one time timely played Defender Argus can push for more damage and change the whole situation. But that requires quite a lot of setup. Yeah. Well, right now we can see that Hunter actually has a lot of bursts that Iron Bigal can deal with the Void Walker. Then he can either use a hero power or just charge with uh, whatever minion he chooses to. And uh, that will put Warlock on 11 or 
or in 10 if he uses Arkhangolem. Well, he uses the Arkhangolem because there's no difference between 5 and 6 mana for the Warlock. It, it does if he draws Doomguard. If well, he wants the race, really yeah. right. In this case, if he has Power Overwhelming Doomguard, he would have 5, 9, 14 damage. So it'd be a little bit short of lethal. Oh, well, that's still far away. Yeah, that's <laughs> really far away. Three turns is a lot. Even if Hunter just hero powers three turns in a row, uh, you're looking at death if your yeah. opponent can just generate two extra damage. Well, he pushes for three, six, seven damage next turn. Right. So that's one Doomguard away from the win because of his PO sure. in the hand. He's actually one damage uh, away. Like he has eight damage on board plus two from uh, from four, four from power, so that's twelve. Oh yeah, I did say not seven. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's pretty really easy to generate, like you said, Defender Vargas, another abusive sergeant. Yep. Uh, Direwolf yeah. Alphas, Shadows and Cleric. People play <laughs> Cleric still? <laughs> nah, <laughs> not really. And he will still be able to top because right now Rosen is only able to deal five points of damage. Right. Well, he will use the Wolf Rider to clear the Flamen. That's my guess. Because he will be pushing for yeah. two damage this turn, and the Mad Scientist will push for another two, 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 two damage, right? Because it, even if it dies, it generates the Explosive Trap. So it's like an additional hero power. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, oh he does He goes all in. Okay. So this is I didn't where suspect that. Taylor just needs to draw a little bit of damage. Yeah. A little bit of damage. There oh, go. there it is. I've been yeah. and we'll finish the game. But you should tap. You should tap. Uh, just for the BM. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, come on. You just take the game. I mean, this is kind of the explosiveness of the Zoo deck. Uh, it still has some pretty good burst. Even though everyone talks about Hunter, uh, Zoo can race sometimes, and it, it often has to. Look uh, look at the uh, PO. That's like a better Sinister Strike, but you need the minion for that. Yeah, uh, better <laughs> better Sinister Strike. <laughs> <laughs> you still can't use that with uh, Malikos, I guess. That's the thing about it, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. You can use it with Faceless. You could. You know, it's actually funny because I know that uh, Cobble Lock was experimented with a little bit um, post Black Rock Mountain because of Emperor Thorson, right? Emperor yep. Thorson reduces Leroy or Arcane Glow and whatever you want to use and Power Overwhelmings to zero mana. It's uh, zero mana as well. No, it's kind of broken. But, but they realize that the traditional Demon Locks or Zoos or even Hand Locks are still really good. I feel like yep. those are just too much stronger than Combo Warlock. But if you're allowed to bring two Warlocks, I wouldn't mind bringing Combo Warlock into Zoo. Actually, we have a Combo Warlock here. Ma uh, Maverick, just, just one? Maverick was playing it, yeah. It's pretty sick. I mean, it makes sense if you're, if you're going to play that over Freeze Mage. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, oh. But what we'll see as time goes on. We have an interesting dynamic here. We have Mech Mage making a reappearance up against Patron, the new dominant combo deck. What's gonna be What's gonna be happening here? Like I don't know this matchup that much. Oh to man. be honest. Well, it all depends uh, on the weapons being drawn by a Warrior, as usual. You know, that's the usual case. If there's like an aggressive deck against the Warrior, if he has the weapons, he has the edge. Without the weapons, he has to, <laughs> you know, get some. <laughs> Right on time. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that that's kind of why uh, Taylor's a god. Just oh. draws the Fire War Axe on turn two. Yeah, well, the, the draw from uh, Rosen here is amazing, too. Well, maybe not the mirror entity now. Yeah, that's a little awkward. But his his cure, Cogmaster, Mad Scientist, Chaga Chaga, and Pulse Shredder, is just, it, it will have been amazing. There will be no Fire War Axe for mm. Taylor Sorestri. Yeah, overall, this matchup is really good for Green Patron. But if uh, if there is such an opening for a uh, Mech Mage, Mech Mage can lock the weapons with freezes and can win. But that fireworks was just in time oh to man. stop it. This is actually so big. Um, not not the two spectators who have shown up faithfully <laughs> at 9 a.m. <laughs> to watch Hearthstone, <laughs> but the cool Taskmaster on the Mirenity allows you to draw cards and trade into the Shredder or trade into whatever cool Taskmaster. It's pretty yep. available. And you get to still use things like Battle Rage after you cool Task, which Unless is just amazing. Unless it's Counter Spell and before it's Counter Spell. Oh yeah, you're right. It could be counter spell, but it's not. No, no, because I think <laughs> yeah, because I think he saw it based off of um, yeah, a bunch of things. So he ends up playing the armor smith instead of going for draw cards. That's also reasonable here, as long as there's not a huge minion that comes out of this. Well, One four. Well, nah, that's, that's is that that's really I mean, is that okay? Because it it only barely affects the minions, and you get battle rage synergy. I definitely would like battle rage in there. So, like, you just leave that up because one of four is a huge liability as the game progresses. You, yeah. That person probably wants to trade it in as time goes on. Well, on the other hand, you want to play it maybe earlier uh, to use it into minion trading. Yeah. And, I mean, Mage is not going to benefit off of uh, Bishops of Pain as much as you think. Well, it pushes like the armor smith, so it's a huge amount of damage. Yeah. I guess so. 
The Kappa emote is based on a photograph of Joss the Sino, an employee of Justin TV working on the chat client. So not everyone knows that Justin TV was former Twitch, right? Yeah, it was before Twitch got made. Um, I remember I was playing a yeah. uh, gig on Justin TV. A gig? Yeah, you know, like move oh, my yeah. band. Oh yeah, Lothar is a musician, or was, slash is a musician. Yeah, an active. An ac inactive musician. He was playing for Slipknot <laughs> for a year. Yeah, with a mask. Yeah, no that's knows believable. About it. That's <laughs> believable. <laughs> Nobody knows that. And so I guess uh, you had one of your events streamed on Justin. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Today I learned. Well, pretty nice board clear here. Uh, the thing about Mecha Mage is you have to have this inbounding pressure. That Pilot Sky Golem could be really devastating, though. Like, how do you deal that efficiently if you don't have the lineup of removal? He needs that Shield Slam uh, or something else to deal with or it. And even then, execute. even then, a, a strong yeah. minion might come out, like yeah, a Pit Lord. But the problem with the Pilot Sky Golem is, from my uh, in my perspective, the drops from the Pilot Sky Golem are way worse than the Pilot Shredder drops. Because they, they can be like a 2-3 yeah. minion, 4-1 minion because of Twilight Drake, right? That's a fair criticism. It's actually, it's so funny because Pilot of Shredder is creating better quality minions. You can get the Doomsayer to clear the board. Right. And uh, from Pilot of Sky Golem, it's just, just bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most I of the time they're just yeah. useless, um, useless small bodies. No Lord Walker though. show, it's just bad. Oh, it that's it not, not all the time. Okay, so oh. he fireballs because he wants to clear the board here. But and that's so painful. It, it is, but I can understand it. I mean, he's got late game potential anyways with more fireballs on Antonidas, but he is giving up his spells too. And this is a very, very good opportunity for Warrior to come back into this game on board. Second patron is one of the bigger threats after he spent so much resources to clear the first wave. Yeah, yeah. you can see Rosen really disappointed by the second patron play there. But he has uh, Mech Warper and... <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the Blast Mage not is the perfect. Blast Mage. Perfect here. No, Blast Mage doesn't seem ideal in a lot of scenarios nowadays, but Grim Patron... Gromish too, well, that's a perfect draw to yeah. so clear that minion. Well, assuming something good came... There's a lot of weak minions like a Jeeves. If Jeeves pops out of this, that's terrible. Okay. Victory, well, as we said, it's a... That's, still, that's still pretty <laughs> bad. Like, there's a <laughs> lot of the average stats on a four four should be like four sorry, five. Uh, an average stat on a four mana minion is four four or three five or something like that. Well, for, well, it's, it's if eight, you think it's eight stats, but if six come out, that's pretty poor. Guys, it, usually it's nine because if you think about like you know um, Yeti, right? That's yeah, usual but Yeti is four mana drop, right? Yeah, but like the average four oh, mana stats, average, yeah, 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 the average yeah, four mana stats is eight, so true, to speak. True. Like it's a three five or a four four. Oh man, he just puts the body on the board. Was well it time to YOLO? Just Mech Warper into Blast, Blast Mage, Mage and to kill the Gromash with three hits? Uh, probably uh, not because Mech Warper is a liability. Well, well, not with probably Grim not. Patron out there. You, you, you could definitely get some really bad results. <laughs> I don't blame him for playing Antonitis here, but it's definitely not oh. a winning move here. And that's amazing considering the start Mech Warper was originally trying to build. It had the board. And I think a lot had to do with the play that you were looking at, Lothar, where it's like he had to give up a fireball instead of develop the board. He yeah. lost control from that point on, and Warrior got to seize the momentum with the second patron. Yeah, definitely, yes. And uh, as we all know, if if Mech Mage loses the momentum, it's basically a dead, yeah, dead I mean, deck. Any mech in general. Yeah. Like, the fact that Mech Shaman and Mech Mage have a lot of similarities, where they have to use their board to get damage and then finally use their burn in order to finish the game. You're seeing the point where there's just too many uh, minions on Warrior's side and too much health. Yeah. There's no out for Mech Mage to come back here. It's yeah, because so there's no draw mechanic in, the right. in those decks, apart from Antonite, which is basically draws yeah. a fireball. Exactly. It's so curious that this single green patron, even though it's not spawning any more patrons, is checkmating those Mech Warpers. You can't play them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> patron's just like an anti-Goblin Blast Mage tech at this point. In fact, there's so many bad things about the, the Blast Mage. It has to hit the Frothing Berserker four times in a row for it to like potentially come back. Yeah, that, that's like okay chances, right? <laughs> uh, one, one, two, one, and four, four one and times? four, four times, that's, uh, well, 256? Yeah, something like that, mm. which is a little bit under point. But to be point honest... 5%. <laughs> 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 oh, math is on point, too. Yeah. <laughs> the buff is definitely good, but um, it all comes down to that Firework stop deck. At the very beginning. Yeah. All right, so game number three. Tiddler has uh, a great lead here, 2 0. He just needs to win with his Druid deck. A deck that's 4 0 Gara. Well, maybe not the same 
Same one. Oh, you mean in WCA? Um, WCA? Yeah, I remember. No one WCA was that. a long time. No one that was like six that. months ago. But that was Druid. You're living in the past, Nimsh. Well, nope. that's an awful <laughs> hand for Rosen. By the way, do you think that playing Mech Mage in this tournament is like... That's an interesting choice because it's because if you predict a lot of Druids, you can use your lineup to kill a Druid, right? But if Rosen has Hunter to kill a Druid, yeah. if he has uh, Mech Mage and Patron Warrior. Oh, wow. The Wild Grip top deck. Yeah. But at the same time, isn't Temple Mage better in current meta game than Mech Mage? It feels like it is, especially considering you can deal with Hunter better as a Temple Mage yeah. compared to Mech Mage. And also you have the Mirror Image to fight against Warrior. Because Mirror Image is like basically well, one mana Neutron. Mirror, mirror Image is also um, also in Mech Mage and Temple Mage, so... Mirror Image? Really mirror Entity, you mean? Oh, 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 sorry, I thought you said Mirror Entity. No, 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 Mirror, mirror Image. Mirror image. Yes, yeah, the Mirror Image could be really big against the Taunts. It all come down, it comes down English to English isn't my first language, Lothar. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> You're from America, right? Yeah. And That's right, I speak American. <laughs> new to Hearthstone as well. <laughs> yeah. I also speak nerdy languages. Well, the Belcher kind of seals the deal here, unless that will be an out. Because the hand, oh god, I can really watch That's that. That's terrible. It's like one of the worst <laughs> hands i ever seen. During his senior year of college, Frodon won an award for giving a speech on eSports. That's right. And then I dropped out of college two months later. Wow. To pursue eSports. <laughs> that was a pretty good speech then. And then well, three years later, I'm casting card games. You're doing good. Remember, kids, stay in school. <laughs> This seems Don't like take drugs. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this seems like Firebat's hand, by the way, from yeah. the from yesterday. Yeah, this this is just really poor. You know, Firebat has a, a knack of like drawing secrets when he has Mad Scientist, or and just in this case having no plays. And you're not in a position to raise Druid at all, especially because how do you deal with Emperor Thorson? You can't even kill Command, finish it off. Well, the Snake Club is pretty yeah. awesome draw. You can you can bluff the explosive uh, Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> you can really hope that he thinks it's misdirection or something. <laughs> well, to be honest, at least he might get a beast if there's an attack at the minion. Now if that would be a swipe. Right. <laughs> it's like well, this is is this lethal? Oh, oh yeah, 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 that's certainly that lethal. Definitely it is. Because even if it's a freezing trap, you can bounce back the one two right. Yeah, and then you exactly. have seven plus uh, six times two. Well, so you that's first 19. You, you, it's you actually first check for freezing trap, right. and then you see what's going on. It's like actually, yeah, with it's this exactly full, yeah. Well, you have you have 20. You have one more damage overkill. Uh, well, he uh, doesn't go for lethal, I guess. Wait, what? Five, seven, nine. No, yeah, yeah, he still has 13, it. He still has 15, it. He still has 15, it. 17, 19. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He still has it. Okay, Wait, you now no. he's counting. Yeah. 12 plus seven is 19. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. He's got lethal. He's being extra safe, but he's like, well, it wasn't explosive, it wasn't freezing, it has to be snake trap. And it's like, well, it, if it's misdirection, oh well. Well, that was a quick but, game, yeah. I would say. That was way too fast. That was a quick series. So Tiddler is taking the series free to Wait, we just started. Um, pretty <laughs> much, you're right. That was 20 minutes ago. I do want to draw attention that I think this is a, a product of an overall stronger lineup from Tiddler. Yeah. Uh, if I were to peg a big reason. You could always say draws and the way card games function fundamentally is what maybe gave Tiddler the advantage. But I think even a sharper, distinct thing, if you can examine it, is just look at the overall lineup. You brought Zoo Warlock, a Patron Warrior, and Druid, which is still pretty decent, especially if people bring Handlock, which is to bring to counter uh, Patron Warriors. Um, that's a really strong lineup overall, especially since it's established that that wins tournaments. If you bring Mech Mage and you bring Hunter and you bring whatever warrior that we didn't get to see, it's a little bit more of a gamble considering Mech Mage is a liability and the element yeah. of surprise only works so many times in Swiss. Also, the, the Hunter didn't seem that good with the Snake Trap and uh, Wolf Riders. I, we couldn't right. fetch this. Inconsistent is more of a, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. for sure. But it does capitalize on the fact that maybe you don't know Rosen as well. And that's what could have led to his 3-0 results so far. So he's doing okay. 3-1 is still not exactly the most comfortable spot. You'd rather drop your match if you had to choose one, maybe at like four or five games. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's about Tiddler's Celestial. He's joined us on the desk. Yeah. How are you feeling, Tiddler? That was, that, that was really quick. Yes, uh, so quick. But being, maybe I get a very good yaw. And, uh, <laughs> maybe wow. <I laughs> so humble. He's saying he's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, um, you ended up being against Rosen. Did you know he played Mech Mage at all? Uh, I don't know, actually. But uh, I think all the, I mean, I mean the, the class versus his class, I, have, I think I have a good advantage mm -hmm. versus his yeah. class. I that's guess. what we actually mm -hmm. said, yeah. that your lineup was way well, yeah. better than yeah, his. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we think that Warlock's really good in general, so he didn't have one. That mm. might have been a weakness. Mm. Um, but in general, like, Mech Mage doesn't seem like a very good deck to bring to the tournament. But yet, you know, we're open to opinions. What do you think about Mech Mage currently in the metagame? Uh, because of the Patreon War area, but Ma Ma Mech Mage seems not that very strong in, in not Ma in nowadays ma ma matter mm -hmm. and uh, I think I think because because there I don't know why there are not many there are not made good so my Mac is not good yeah. maybe, maybe that's it that's yeah. a good point yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. makes sense yeah uh, mm. is it your first time to Europe no it and uh, maybe it's the second time in, um, in Sweden and uh, last time in the uh, yeah, by by game by by game yeah of course oh yeah yeah it's cool yeah. Uh, um how how's everything with Team Celestial you know it's a new team uh, you have Frozen Ice and Silent Storm and yeah. some really good players. H how did that happen? Yeah, mm, I think um, you know in China there were, there were not a, lo a lot of opportunity to to communi communicate with Western players. I think I, maybe I should uh, build a team more in, in international, and uh, we maybe have a, mm, more chance to make make something like. China versus Europe or something yeah. like this. That's a very that was really very yeah. cool yeah. initiative, you know? Because mm, yeah, as we many times spoke about this situation, uh, there's like a huge wall between uh, Europe and China when it comes to communication uh, and we can't really play against each other. So uh, situations like mm -hmm. here when we can meet for a dream hack uh, is one of the yeah. one of the events when we can actually, you know, try out or different meta games and yeah. uh, battle against each other. So mm -hmm. making a team that has more connection to Europe is Great, great. Yeah. Yeah. I have one more question before we let you go. Uh, mm. I, I always like to do this whenever we have another region come. Yeah. Can you rank the best region or like the regions from best uh, downwards? Like, where, <laughs> where does China sit? Like, if, is is America number one? Is Europe number one? Is China number one? Like, rank the top three regions uh, according to what you think. I think the top players. I, I should say maybe maybe I think. Let me see. Maybe Europe and. Uh, oh. North America and China, maybe I think that we have the same level, but but I think, but in China, I, I must say there are a lot of players in China. You know, la last month we have um, I mean fourteen thousand. Le legend. legend, yeah, yeah fourteen thousand legend. legend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, That's so, so crazy. So it doesn't so even crazy. fit on the crystal anymore. Yeah. There's so many numbers. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Well, it's true. China does have a lot of players, so yeah. eventually there are uh, more to pick from. Yeah. But um, you know, you're the best of the best there in terms of China. So congratulations, you're four zero, and uh -huh. good luck in the next round. Uh -huh. It's three more to go to be to have the perfect score here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, th we're done with our first match, but we uh, prepared for this just in case uh, they end up ending early. We have another match from the same heat. It's Stan Sivka versus Nico, a Finnish player. But Stan Sivka has been the hot player recently from Czech Republic. Uh, well, I'm curious to see how he's going to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple minutes. They're setting up right now. When we come back, we'll finish out heat one of round number four. Stay tuned.